cool. Talk to him. <laughs> awesome, you guys. Well, welcome, welcome uh, to Wedding MBA's presentation of Friends with Benefits. Thank you. Um, I am super honored to be here with you guys for the next 45 minutes. And um, today's going to be a super fun, engaging, interactive session. Okay, so um, we'll get the perfunctory, like, housekeeping stuff out of the way really quickly. Uh, my name is Casey Everhart. I live in Los Angeles, although I joke that I really only pay my mortgage in Los Angeles. Anybody from L.A.? There we go. I'm a Sherman Oaks Valley boy. So um, we have horrible fires, so it's nice to be out of town where I can actually kind of breathe. Instead of breathing smoke from a forest, I can breathe, breathe smoke from a cigarette. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, so, welcome everybody. Super excited. Good show so far? Yes. These guys just put on one of the best presentations, the best conferences in the world. And so, I was joking with Patty out there, and um, she gave me a little international thing because she follows me on Facebook. She's like, you're never in the country. I'm a guy that goes to Australia like 10 times a year. Um, anybody have Australia on their bucket list? Go. I'm scared something will kill me. It will. The bugs there are big. So just stay in a hotel. It'll be fine. So. Um, so today we're going to have a conversation um, really about some creative different ways to network and build networks and build strategically and strategic networks of people ultimately to bring referrals back to the business, right? How many of you, just out of curiosity, rely on at least 50% of your business comes from word about referrals or some form of referral? Raise it really high. Look around the room, you guys. Look at how many people's hands are raised. You probably are about 80% of the room. Now, raise your hands if you can honestly tell me that the, tell me the number one, two, and three referral partners that you have in your business based on data, meaning you can go into your a QuickBooks account and tell me who's actually sending you the referrals. Raise them high. Look at, look at the room. There's like. 4% of the room has raised their hand. Therefore, we've got ourselves a good old-fashioned quagmire problem. Right? Now, I have no idea if quagmire is the right word. It just sounded good because there's a lot of people from Florida, and it seems like a word from Florida would be quagmire. <laughs> I don't know why. Right? So, so over the course of the next 45 minutes, my goal is to get you into a mindset that you walk out here going, okay, these referral partners are really, really important, so I want to be able to strategically figure out who those referral partners are, take really good care of them, so that they continue to bring us back more referrals. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, I know because I've gone through tons of sessions, and this is my, I, was take, I took a couple of years off from wedding MBA just because of the, of the travel schedule, but I know that a lot of folks you guys come here, if you're in Las Vegas, you kind of would rather be in Las Vegas, like be at the Strip and all that stuff. So I'm going to make it soup. We're going to try to have as much fun as we can. Is that OK? Because, I mean, look, any goofball that's going to wear sunglasses on his shirt and purple velvet shoes, you know, at least he's going to try to have some fun. Some of you already know the shoes. That's OK. Um, Mark Jacobs International. <laughs> Do what the stylists tell you. I learned that from some, several of you stylists in the room. Do we have any stylists in the room? Awesome. Good, good, good. So we're going to really talk today strategically and creatively about networking. Now, I, I, the next slide is actually going to be really funny, but before, a couple of quick questions. How many of you were handed a yellow piece of paper and we like chased you down and harassed you to come to today's presentation? Just raise it really high. Okay, good. I just want to prove to my friends that are here with me that it works. Um, so thank you, for, thank you for being here. Um, Secondly, let me ask you a question. How many of you get really, really excited? Like you were just so excited to like put your makeup on, put your face on, put your best skirt on, some of you tuxedo on, whatever it is, and get in your car and drive out to a networking event. Okay, keep them high, don't let them down. Here's what's funny. Every time I ask this, it's always the first row. Because they're the extroverts like. <laughs> We're ready to go, right? And all the people in the back are like, if this guy sucks, I am so out of here. Right? Right? I told them back there that the first three I'll make fun of, and then the fourth one they can all go, right? So here's the challenge with networking events. Let me, let me ask you, this is the reason why most of us don't like going to networking events. Because everybody there is selling something to each other, and nobody's there to buy. 
right? And they're not there to buy because they're to sell to the same 150 people that aren't there to buy anything. So meanwhile, you've got 150 people selling 150 products to 150 people that aren't there to buy because they're ready to sell their 150 products, the same 150 products. Meanwhile, all that really occurs is Triscuits, cheese cubes, and maybe a Dixie cup of wine for like 15 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> right? So the goal for <laughs> so the goal for today is I want to give you a different perspective on how to go to a networking event, who to actually talk to, and some things that you can actually do, do to increase the likelihood that some of this will turn into some profitable business. My job as a, I run a business mastermind and coaching program, and we have two drivers. So everything I come from uh, really aims to do two things for us entrepreneurs. Save time and or make more money. If it doesn't fall into one of those two categories, I'm just not that interested as a business person. Does that make sense? So if we listen today from a context of making more money and or saving time, we should be good to go. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question and I am gonna ask you to respond back to me really loudly, okay? It's a very simple question. There's tons of seats over here. If you guys are just like dipping your toe in the water, you wanna actually sit and commit. You can come over here. You don't have to. There's a lot more light on this side of the room, right? But uh, there are some seats over here. I think there are a couple of seats in the back there as well. But, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, it's going to be a very simple answer. I just want you to give me back the first person that comes to mind and just yell it out, okay? You ready? Yeah. You guys will play? Yeah. Your, your voices are working? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who is the most powerful woman in the world? We got Michelle Obama, Oprah, Kim Kardashian. Okay, so I don't need to go any further. Here's the deal it doesn't matter if I ask a group of two or a group of 20,000, I get the same name in the top one or two spots every single time. Oprah Winfrey. You guys realize she's been off the air for almost 20 years? Yeah. Right? So here's the interesting thing. The most powerful woman in the world, I didn't say the richest woman, I didn't say the most politically, I, I, usually the dudes are like, a wife, and they're sitting right next to me. If I'm speaking the LGBTQ community, it's Ellen, right? So it doesn't matter, almost always Oprah is the first one or two people that are mentioned. So let me ask you this, what does Oprah sell? Herself? So she's a whore. <laughs> you said it, I'm just repeating. No, right. Just making sure you guys are keeping on your toes, keeping on your toes. She sells what? Her brand? Okay, so how, what is that, what is the word that we would say with that? What does she have a lot of? Recommendation. She has a lot of money, I love that. Recognition? Influence. Somebody just said it back here. Influence. Oprah peddles influence, right? So she's got a big tribe. She's super powerful and influential. And then she cashes in that influence when she recommends like cars, like you get a car, you get a car, you get a car, right? Or she recommends a book. And if she recommends a book, what happens? Like half of South America goes, no, we're going to be a tree. A tree's going to turn into a book, right? Uh, because she recommends it. So here's the thing. If we can learn anything from Oprah, we can learn to increase our influence. That's what I'm gonna try to do for you guys today, is show you how when you walk into a networking event, you can be Oprah. You can be Oprah in your community with or without the big hair, <laughs> with or without your business, right? Because here's the reality. In all of our wedding planning businesses or our wedding business, whatever business we represent, if we're looking for referrals, we want to be the resource that everybody comes to. Does that make sense? If we're kind of the go-to person, then everything else tends to fall in line, and you too can be Oprah. Right? Now, I do, in fact, have an Oprah wig, but I left it at home. Because <laughs> they're going to have, they have folks in these. Do you guys know, by the way, just as a side note, um, one of the things I love about Wedding MBA is they are so focused on driving value for all of us speakers. Um, 
it's their number one priority. And so if you see anybody from Wedding MBA, just give them a just give them a high five for actually forcing the speakers to drive tons of value. There's you guys know there's no super hard sales pitches. This we do this because we love this. Does that make sense? Okay, so back to Oprah. If we want to be Oprah, let's talk about what Oprah will do at a networking event. Okay? Now, in order to understand what she's gonna do at a networking event, I want to show you oh. Let's, let's, okay, we got it. A uh, uh, couple of things. Towards the end, I'm going to hand you out a sheet that asks you for your name and email address. If you give me that, I'll just send you the slides when I'm done tomorrow. Awesome. If you don't like the other email that I send you, then just unsubscribe. It's super easy, okay? Um, if you put your address on there, I might send you some brownies or something cool in the mail. And if you don't like it, you can just send me it back. The brownies are cool, right? Sent some somebody over here, right? Um, but um, I'll just send you the slides, and um, so you can take pictures of the slides as well. If that makes sense for you, take pictures of any slides out here. Fair enough. I mean, this, you guys need to learn stuff, and it makes sense. Cool. So this is the relationship marketing mastery sales flow chart. Okay. I'm so used to a screen being over there. <laughs> so sorry. So if we start at the top, you guys, when we go to a networking event or whatever, people come into our space as a contact, okay? We don't know whether they're a prospect for our business or if they have any influence or if we have any influence over them. What we know right now is that they're just a contact, right? From contacts, we get to know them a little bit. They move into prospects. Is everybody a prospect for your business? Nope. No. No. Some of the things that make people a prospect that I think a lot of businesses um, miss is you've got to be doing presentations to the decision makers, right? How many of you do business presentations and you're doing presentations to a bride or a groom only to find out at the end they say, oh, you know what? This is awesome, but I got to talk to my maid of honor. I got to talk to my bride. I got to talk to my groom. I got to talk to my dog catcher, my heroin dealer, whoever, <laughs> right? But there's always somebody else that they need to check with. Make sure you're doing presentations to the, to the um, decision maker. The other thing is make sure they have the money. We don't talk about that often enough. We need to make sure that the presentations we do, if somebody's trying to do a destination wedding in Fiji and they have the money to do a, you know, um, a church basement or best western basement Pacoima wedding, <laughs> right? Those of you in California know Pacoima. <laughs> Not a destination. Um, <laughs> Um, that's what moves into a prospect. From those prospects, some people are going to become customers. Are everybody going to become customers? No, we know that, right? But if we take our customers and we treat them super awesome and make them feel absolutely special and amazing, some of them are going to turn into referral partners or raving fans, right? What we need to be able to do is take those raving fans and really make sure that they are super taken care of in our space or in our ecosystem because if we know that birds of a feather flock together and we know that, um, uh, I call it the Chardonnay lunch, I've completely made this term up. I don't know if anybody else has experienced a Chardonnay lunch, but the Chardonnay lunch is when a bride, she's ready to go, we've got her all situated, we're rocking and rolling, and then there's some sort of lunch that happens. It's usually by an ocean somewhere on the coast, it's all the bridesmaids, it's all her best friend, and it's usually on a Sunday, there's usually lunch, and then there's like 19 bottles of Chardonnay. And then as vendors, we literally have to push through and make sure that we survive that Chardonnay lunch. Because they all chitter chat, right? So because we all chitter chatter, let's make sure they are taken care of as well, so that all the bridesmaids and the people in the party not only have a neutral, but have a favorable impression of us. Does that make sense? Okay. Because... The businesses that can make this thing spin fastest will win every single time. That's how we start snuffing out our competition, really, is making this win because we have referrals and those referrals come from the people that absolutely love and adore us. Does that make sense? You guys hear what I'm saying? Yeah. This ring a bell? Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? Is this grasping this? Do you know why I'm asking you three times in three different ways? Yeah. Here's why, because when I say, do you guys see what I'm talking about, all you visual people are like, Although I can't see because I'm staring at your PowerPoint, right? Oh, when I say you grasp this, at that moment you're like, oh my gosh, 
he's talking to me, there's a piece of paper. He told me I'm going to get a piece of paper and I get to touch, 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 right? <laughs> Does this ring a bell as the auditory listeners? Those are the folks you guys are probably listening to podcasting. Your heads are down, you're not paying attention to me. You're listening to the speaker, you're not paying attention there. It's important for all of us to understand that people like to be communicated in different modalities. So the faster we find out from our prospects and our customers how they like to be communicated with, the better off we can start phrasing our emails, our Facebook ads, so on and so forth. Yes, you got a question? Somebody did. No, sorry, I have oh, a yeah. question. Do you have ways to get referrals by people who are not clients? Yeah. <laughs> I just learned very early on to answer questions, not pontificate. Yeah, if, if I haven't showed you that by the end, then give me a badge reference on the survey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. No, no, you're not going to throw me off. We'll, be, we'll all be out of here at 45 after. So, uh, no, so yeah, so the deal is, is that referrals come from people when they believe we have influence. And so what we have to be able to do is establish ourselves as an influential player in our marketplace. So look, when we go to networking events, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by breaking down an actual networking event, and then we're going to talk about the follow-up ways and unique ways to stay in touch with our referral partners, okay? So when you go to a networking event, here are some things to keep in mind. Number one, when you rock into a networking event, go with purpose and intention and walk in there understanding what it is with is nothing more than lead generation. People are trying to sell at networking events and nobody's there to buy. So what we want to be able to do is go in and go, we're not trying to sell anything. We're just here to make friends. We're just here to make friends. So let's show you how to increase the ability for you to make friends. Number one, have your calendar ready, right? So when I meet Richard and I'm talking to Richard, at the end of our conversation, I'm like, Richard, when can we get together for coffee? I got tomorrow at three or, you know, Tuesday at seven. What works? And I'm going to write my calendar. My goal at a networking event is nothing more than to fill my calendar. If they're not worth um, putting in your calendar, then they don't need to go in your calendar, right? Have your camera, this is huge. Obviously your camera is your what? Oh, right? So here's the deal. When you are meeting people at a networking event, um, can I just show you like a super cool trick to do that most people don't do and it's, it's huge. So when you meet somebody, like let's say I meet Douglas at a networking event, we're chatting, we get along really well, and, and we both establish that, hey, we should probably take this offline or let's go have a cup of coffee somewhere or beer or whatever, right? I'm gonna say, Douglas, let's uh, take a quick selfie. So I'll take a selfie, that's the international sign for take a selfie, right? <laughs> and then I'm gonna say, hey Douglas, put in your phone number right now, I'm gonna text you this picture. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna spat the phone out of my hand? If so, not a good thing. <laughs> right? But what he's most likely gonna do is he's gonna take it and he's gonna put his phone number in. And then I'm gonna say, hey Douglas, this is Casey, we met at Wedding MBA, you attended my session called Friends with Benefit, looking forward to connecting with you afterwards. And I'm gonna send him the picture, right there on the spot. Here's why. Because when he goes home, and I follow up with him via text, he's gonna get a phone number that he's not gonna know who it is. So he's gonna to have to open it up. When he opens it up, he's not gonna know who it is until he gets triggered mentally by the picture that I sent him. And I told him who I am, where we met, and even maybe what we discussed. Does that make sense? It's huge, huge. And it's a way for you to start building your contacts in your phone, right? And at the end, I'm gonna show you a really cool service that you can actually take that information and with one click of a button, I don't know if that's the right word, uh, but, but with one click of a button, you can actually trigger a nice to meet you card, some nice to meet you brownies, maybe even a coffee mug with a logo on it, right, right from your phone. Right, your phone is your tool that everybody carries on. So no perfume, right? So here's the deal. Let's say you go meet somebody at a networking event and they are an absolute amazing ideal client for you. Absolutely amazing ideal client for you. And you've got your Kim Kardashian, because she's the most powerful woman in the world, you've got your Kim Kardashian perfume rocket, right? And turns out that that perfume triggers the other person that you're talking to, and that was what his ex-wife wore. You're out. Perfect client. Out. Because of just something as simple as perfume. It's just not worth it, you guys. Right? Same with no pet hair. 
This is easily taken care of with a 99 cent lint roller from, from, the, from, from, from the Dollar Tree. Right? Like, I'm such a geek. I have a shave kit, dog kit, ladies week. That's what we call it. I don't like to call it a man purse. But um, ladies call it purses or handbags, suitcases, trunks. I don't know what all goes in those things. But um, put some breath mints in there, a lint roller in there. Dudes, if you wear a tie, put another tie in there so that you can rock up and not rock in. I don't know, I'm using rock as a verb a lot. I don't know why. Um, but uh, that pet hair, I'm allergic to cats. So if I'm a perfect ideal client for you and you and I are talking and you've got cat hair all over yourself and I start eating a Zyphal, like, we're done. It's just not worth it. Does that make sense? Plug for Zyphal. Uh, this one I get an argument. This one I get in arguments with all the time, and that is no business cards. Here's the thing, you don't need them. If Oprah are gonna walk into a networking event and start chucking out business cards, she doesn't need to because everybody knows that she's Oprah, right? Nobody, what do you do with your business cards anyways? You're gonna go home and throw them away. Those of you that don't say you throw them away, buyers, <laughs> right? I'm going to show you in a minute what I, what I do with business cards that I collect. Now, I'm not saying don't collect business cards, because as marketers, if I collect your business card, Jesse, I'm then going to put you on my email list and I'm going to start communicating to you, right? If you take your business card out to 500 people, you know what 500 people are going to do? Put you on their email list and try to market to you. Sometimes that's okay, sometimes it's not. So we're going to talk a little bit more about business cards here in a second. Have a web capture tool. This isn't as important, but um, also no name tags on the right hand side. You want to put your name tag on the left hand side. Here's why. So if I go, if I go to shake Ivana's hand, right, and I've got it on the right hand side at networking events, can we agree they're usually those crappy Avery, like super thin, crinkly ones they've really written on them with like a ballpoint pen and nobody can see it anyway? So here's what happens. I put it on my right hand side, I crinkle my shade. My name is Casey and it turns out it's assy, <laughs> right? Which means he's gonna be calling me assy for like an entire 20 minutes, right? Uh, so if you do it on the left, it's open and you want people to be able to communicate and see your name. Now, helpful hints, ladies, specifically ladies, if you do not want people looking at your boobs, you said it, I did, I'm great, thank you. Putting your name tag right here doesn't work. Turns out, oh my God. yeah, it's like, it's all I got. That's why it's like right here is a big no <laughs> Right? And no selling. Remember, nobody is there to buy anything. So we don't need to be selling. We are there to establish ourselves as an influencer inside that marketplace. Does that make sense? Can you guys see how just doing these few small things will change literally like that? Literally change like that. So look, this is um, <laughs> this is a reminder for me. I code my business cards. When I meet you at a networking event, you get a code. I always carry a Sharpie with me, right? Here's, first off, there's promotional products. I, okay, so I said that I was gonna make one of the first three people that needed to leave. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. I know it sucked. Ciao. Only one more piece of person can walk out and then I won't say anything anymore. Um, uh, so Sharpie, I carry a Sharpie because a pencil will not carve through those business cards um, that your promotional products person in your chamber sold you, right? <laughs> they just don't work, right? So I carry a Sharpie because they write on the glossy business cards, right? So when I'm taking a business card, I'm out writing down notes on that business card. And the first thing that comes up is a star or a smiley face. Star means follow up with the person. Smiley face means dumbass. <laughs> because how many times do we get in a business card situation and the easy way to get out of a conversation is to uh, 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 take somebody's business card, right? But how are you going to remember at home who are the cool people and who you just need to get out of? Yeah. I actually do that at the wedding shows. You do what? I do that at the wedding shows. You know, when they fill out the little slip, I always put smiley face on them. Like, not even. Yeah. And you know what's funny is I used to write dumbass on cards because it just was like, it was more for me. And then some guy came up to me, I was at the Disneyland Hotel doing a trade show, putting the business cards in the fishbowl of the leads I'm never going to follow up on for the gas card I'm never going to buy. And um, I, I, some of you relate. 
Uh, so this guy comes back up and he's like, yo, bro! Because that's all how they talk, right? Yo, bro, I need my card back, my cell phone number's wrong. And I'm like, oh, and I start sweating. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to I'm like, okay, so dude, before I hand you your business card back, understand that it does say dumbass on it. <laughs> Is Jamie in the best spot or the worst spot? 
worse, right? Because here's what's going to happen. First off, she's going to go, and the rest of you are in a sheer panic. Oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Oh, my God, I don't know what to say. <laughs> she's in a panic. So she stands up. She stands up. She's on the floor currently. There is a person down here. There's a person down here. Right? So she stands up and gives her 30 seconds. And is anybody listening? No. Because no, you're all panicked. The minute she sits down, the minute she sits down, now she's like, <laughs> now she can go eat her bad breakfast or whatever it is, right? And now she's not listening because she's already done. So number one, if you know that that's the best spot in the building, then go make sure you sit there. Number two, how to generate referrals is find the person that you've met with and connected with that you've already done a selfie with, and then use your 30 second commercial to introduce them. Right? So if I stand up and say, hi, my name's Casey, and I give you my little 30 second spiel or whatever, nobody's really listening. But if I stand up and say, hi, everybody, my name's Casey Earhart, good morning. Now, I want to introduce you to my buddy Joe Kenmore over here. My buddy Joe Kenmore over here is the CEO and founder of a company called Banner Season. They do unique personalized gifts that you can send, send right from your phone or right from your computer, one-off personalized, customized promotional products gifts. And I go, you guys, if you don't have that in your business, you need to go talk to Joe. And I sit down. Who is the most likely person that's listening to that 30 second commercial? Yeah. Joe, I just made it feel like a million bucks. I just increased the likelihood that he and I are gonna be friends with benefits. <laughs> right, Joe? <laughs> His fiance Susan would be really pissed, but um, that'll hit some of you later. Um, so use your 30 second commercial not to promote yourself because nobody's there to buy anything. Find another influencer in the room and use your 30 seconds to highlight them. The first couple of times, it's super awkward. And people are going to go, well, what do you do? And they always say it with that voice and like their face all contorted. Who are you? None of your business. If you want to know, we can go to coffee and we can talk about it. Right? It's super, super important to take that 30 second time slot and highlight something because here's the kicker. You guys, influencers hang out with other influencers. They run in a click. Do you ever notice that? You go to a networking event and there's like this click of people and they're all the fancy pants. They're all over, they're all a click. You know what they're all talking about? How to increase each other's influence. Oh, you be on my podcast, I'll be on your podcast. Oh, you do a blog post on me, I'll do a blog post on you. That's how you break into the influencers. The influencers will be able to sell your business way more than you will be able to. Having the influencers and the rock stars in that chamber or that B&I or the TIP or team or polka dots um, or eWomen Network or wherever you network, um, having the influencers and the organizers and the speakers talk about you, way more valuable and way better for your business than you trying to do a marketing message. Do you guys get that? Yeah? Yep. Yes, no? Yes. yes. Okay. Somebody sent me this. I think this is so cool. It says, do something awesome today with my name on it. It's kind of cool, isn't it? I said it to myself. <laughs> Put this into practice, 
Next year, the five of you will walk into this event and everybody will know who you are. It's massive. It's massive. So, this is it. I put a bunch of stuff up on the board. The next two slides, if you want to take pictures of the slides, you're more than welcome to. It's a bunch of different ways to follow up with people. And then, like I said, we just handed you out um, a form. I'd love to stay in touch with you. If you have some need in your business that's on that flyer, just check it off. And if you start send that in and you want to have a chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, down at the bottom I think it says we'll have a strategic conversation. I'm happy to do that. I work with businesses all, all over the planet, we'll, we'll have some fun. Now, some of you might say, well, why are there all these kind of weird things in the middle of this call to action form, right? That's because my network, I've got a bunch of people, you ladies got to pee. Okay, bye. At least we're going together. Be safe. <laughs> I know what's going to happen on the survey now, when you guys all get the survey. Guy made fun of us having to pee. Some of you have to pee right now, and you're just terrified. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So I'm going to try to get you out of here a few minutes early. So I put down a bunch of ways for you to stay in touch. Keep in mind that with these, how you guys stay in touch with people, you need to vary it up. If you're only using um, Facebook chat, you've got to vary it up a little bit. If you're only using greeting cards, you've got to vary it up a bit. Because not everybody wants to co be communicated with in that same way. Just the way that we're best and easiest at. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So, here's a bunch of them. Number one, you can text them. We've got their text number because we met them in a networking event. Right? Uh, you can send them a nice to meet you card. Email, by the way, still works. The challenge with email is that open rates are about 20% right now, and if you hit 20%, you're like, awesome, which means that 80% of your work is going unnoticed. But if you take their email, and you've got their email address, and you can text them, and you can connect with them on Facebook or LinkedIn or Insta or whatever, now you have modalities of they may see your message in the way that they want to be communicated with. Like, I am not a phone person. My voicemail literally says, I'm not going to answer you, I am not going to call you back, so go to my website, connectwithcasey.com, and find the time on my schedule, because I ain't calling you back. <laughs> like, I don't like the phone. But, send me a text or a Facebook chat, I'm on it 100%. Right? So with people, people are like, dude, I've left you like seven voicemails, you never call me back, yet you never listen to my message. <laughs> You're trying to sell me something, listen to my message, I'm telling you, don't leave me a message. <laughs> right? Magazine articles, super easy. You can, you can take magazines, um, cut the articles out, send them to your top 100 list or your top, one, your top 100 dream clients. Just fold it up, no business cards because we're not selling. Remember, we're creating friends with benefits. Okay? So we just send a message that says, hey, you saw this article, take it of you. Fold it up, put it in an envelope, send it to her. Imagine what your customer thinks when she gets something in the mail from you that's not a bill. Right? Connect with them on social media, you can promote them on social media. Become a referral generating machine. Right? If you can become a referral generating machine, everything else works itself out. So the more people you come in contact with, look for those points of referral because what happens to somebody that gives out tons of referrals, Number one, law of reciprocity. But number two, everybody in the room is now knowing that you're the one that's generating leads for them. It's a lot, you guys. You will be the influencer in the room. Okay? Do a blog post. Send them a small gift like this water bottle. I have a friend of mine that sent me this mug that says it's a never hard thing. You wouldn't understand. Um, tons, of, tons, of cool, tons of cool stuff. Okay? You can interview them, do a video testimonial on them, send them a sample, introduce them to others, invite them to an event like this. You got a P2? Oh. Ooh. We're either going to get really bright for the next few minutes or we're going to be really dark together. Some of you just went, whoa, he's ugly. No, that's okay. And you were talking about your neighbor. I get it. Right? No. So you can buy from them. You can send them a copy of your book if you have a book. Right? No, oh, see, I said we were going to go really dark. Maybe we could go somewhere in the middle. That's fine. Just leave it there, Brenda. They'll, they'll, they'll connect it up. So you guys, is this helpful? You can have tons of different opportunities here. Right? There's an amazing tool out there.
out there um, that can allow you to send greeting cards and gifts right from your phone or right from your computer. It's a company called Banner Season, right? You can sign it for free. You only pay for what you use. I already mentioned it. Joe Kenner, I don't know where he went. He must have snuck out of here. Um, Joe happens to be the CEO of it. Our booth, at my booth, by the way, we have a bunch of folks from our Five Inner Circle, like Chris Dyer back here. Chris, hold up that water bar. Chris makes these amazing bling products. Like, think about how cool, like, Swarovski's uh, crystallized water bottles and mugs you have. Tons of cool stuff. At our booth, you can come over and see a bunch of, a bunch of cool stuff. Um, if you want me to show you Banner Season, it's on your sheet there. You just check it off. I'm happy, I'm happy to show it to you. You can send greedy, uh, gifts to people like this water bottle. I actually did send this to myself just because I didn't think it was cool. Um, but it's like 30 bucks. A mug that's personalized is like 15 bucks. It's nothing. Right? Especially in how you make somebody feel. Because, watch this. Here's what happens when you send personalized brownies. Did, um, Omar, did I send you the awesome brownies down on there? On the right hand side? It was like the, the black. Oh, the, the, that's right, that's right. Different one. So here's the thing, you can create brownies or cakes with the person's logo on it or the person's name on it and send it out one at a time for like seven bucks. But here's the kicker part, guys. You can do it in a campaign, but also you can send, let, imagine having your top 100 customers, your top 100 referral partners get brownies from you or a mug from you. Here's what happens. You may look at it as a cost, but what happens is they go post it all over social media how awesome you are. Instant influence happens from that. Instant influence from that, right? This is just another example. Mike and Brenda are in the room that are right over here. Um, Bruce right here is with a company called Hempsmart. It's like the best CBD on the planet. I shouldn't say the best, but I'll get trouble for making a claim. But it's an amazing <laughs> CBD product. Um, he's, got a, he's part of our booth over there as well, so you can go talk to Bruce. But Bruce sent Mike and Brenda a coffee mug and a card. They posted it all over social media. My friend Alex, um, owns a podcast, so he sends out brownies and a mug to all his podcast guests so that when they do the live interview, the person's holding the mug, drinking out of the mug on camera. Very, very low cost investment for very, very high impact um, on somebody's business. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So look, you guys, I know that um, we're going to wrap out of here in a couple of minutes. I want to come back to this slide in particular. And remember, when you fill those sheets out, I'm going to send you the slide deck. We're Facebook liveing this, so I'll have the video of this. I'll send you the video of this presentation as well. I also created a face. How many of you do Facebook lives? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Heart palpitations now. Y'all should be. Oh my God! Now I just flipped into the south. <laughs> you should. Consider doing Facebook Live. It's really, 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 really important. Um, I have like 20 of them up here. I'll send it to you guys afterwards, but I have a Facebook Live resource list. It's literally like, say this, say this, go here, say this. And then I have a bunch of resources that are free or a couple of bucks to help you come up with topics and ideas to help increase the influence of your marketplace. I think I have like 20 of them, but when you send them, you hand out those sheets when you leave, I will, uh, I'll just email that to you. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, um, I wanted to finish up with this slide. We have one more slide after this. Just to go back to you guys, if you are going to networking events and when you're looking at your business from moving customers down that train or down that value train, um, if you take this in mind and ask your staff and ask your folks each element of this, how do we get somebody to this coveted position right here where they are actually giving us referrals? And in most importantly, making sure that those referral partners that are actually sending you business, whether they're customers of yours or not, if somebody's willing to tell their friends about you or tell their friends about your business, then don't you think at least a thank you might be in order? Because the reality is people um, are gonna do more of what's positively reinforced. If you never say thank you and somebody else comes along in your marketplace, you have the ability or you risk losing that person as a referral partner. And they're gonna go be friends with benefits with someone else. Does that make sense? Is this, you guys understand, you yes. tracking with me? Yes. Okay. So you guys look, I wanna get you out of here just a couple of minutes ahead of time because I know you wanna to get to your next session. I hope this session has been helpful for you. 
Um, we have a booth, it's 5120, and I know each of you know what each booth number is. <laughs> but we don't. Um, but it'll say Networking Riches on it. You'll see Bruce over there. We've got Chris with the Dorofsky thing. We've got uh, Mike and Terry over here. We've got a bunch of people out in our booth. We'd love to chat with you about anything that will help you move your business forward. Thank you guys very much. If you'll turn in your forms on your way out, that'd be awesome. Thanks, guys.